Staten Island, they said we ignore Staten Island. Staten Island is a forgotten borough. But your council member made sure that Staten Island was a better nation. She gave and she gave and she gave some more. Our own Harriet Tubman of Staten Island, I was so proud of Staten Island. Our Rosa Parks of Staten Island, we thank you for her, Lord our Father. Debbie has made history here on Staten Island, and we in the Democratic Party are very proud of that. Us Democrats gotta stick together, okay? Yeah. I love Debbie. I've seen the sweet and kind and gentler side of Debbie Rose. But I've also seen the West Brighton side of Debbie Rose too. But she is a fighter. And she has fought for the North Shore. And so there were people who lived in communities and districts that refused to speak up as loud as Debbie Rose did, even though I lived in a district where they were safe. If it wasn't for her, I would not have had the opportunity to be where I am today. So I want to make that very clear. Debbie Rose decided that the people she was representing were more important than the seat that she held. So Deb, you made history, and you cleared the path for so others. And like you and I, we've got a responsibility on our shoulders to lift up all books. Uh, my good friend Debbie Rose, uh, who I got to know before she was in the council. I've known Debbie over 20 some odd years uh, because of her work in the community before she got what she deserved being a elected official. Councilwoman Debbie Rose has dedicated her career to supporting, uplifting, and fighting for Staten Island. We thank you for allowing her the three terms of office and leadership that has changed the trajectory and the dynamics of this district. The commitment that Debbie has for our kids in this district, she goes above and beyond to make sure that we have the community centers, the park spaces, everything that our community needs. What matters is that we are all the same people trying to do the same thing, and that's lift each other. She was working for the people of the North Shore way before we elected her. I just had the opportunity to learn so much about your family today, even. It's amazing. Well, you know, we shared the last name, so who knows? <laughs> Debbie, you are not a politician. You love people. And you love to lift people. Because we say we work 24-7. You want to know what? We work 24-7. And it's simply amazing to be the first black elected on this island. Yeah. Like, that's amazing. Yeah. It's hard enough to be a Democrat yeah. on this island. The one thing about this is uh, I've known her way before she was council, and she never, ever forgot her roots. Through my life, I find out that she fought for family, <laughs> and uh, my wife thought a little bit more than very close friends, from a way that I can't say how long ago, very close friends. While I cannot get in front of folks and placate, I have to be who I am and tell the truth and shame the devil. You have been an angel on Staten Island. We have Councilman Rose is a tireless champion for Staten Island, a trailblazer and model for members of her community. In addition to her work above, she has brought millions of dollars in public funds back home to the North Shore of Staten Island. The recent renaissance of the North Shore has brought new parks and improved water park front jobs in the community, and more availability in North Shore Public Schools. I can call Debbie up now and be like, girl. <laughs> we get on the phone, we talk the whole time. <laughs> and she's always wanted to bring that vibe back to the island. That vibe of community. That vibe of knowing each other. That vibe of you are responsible for your People. And she's never lost that.
will do a drum performance. Now, interestingly, he played the drums at Debbie's first inauguration in 2009. a 
of weakness and that there was something wrong with him recognizing the injustice that we have suffered for decades, for decades and years and the millennium since I, I'm not that old, but I've lived this. <laughs> And he was punished for standing up right. for our rights and stuff. And that is integrity. Yeah. That's right. And yeah. that is honor. Yeah. You know, my biggest fear has always been um, to have, I never want to be a part of the criminal justice system on the inside of it. I never wanted to be that person that had to do the perp walk. And um, my family brought us up with a lot of pride that if I was not, if I didn't do anything wrong or, or criminal or dishonest, then I shouldn't have to suffer 
that kind of humiliation. And before I could even take this office, some folks saw fit to expose me to my greatest fear was that of my reputation being impugned by some um, false, false hoods, lies, and incriminations. And the fact that I had to be exposed to that before I even took office. But when you're the first, there's a lot of expectations. Yes, yes, yes. And, you know, being the first black woman on set, I'm the first person of color to be elected to anything. Dog catcher. You know, they can have a dog catcher of color. You know, when you're the first, there are a lot of expectations. And people are looking at you. And they're looking at you to see if you fail and how you conduct yourself. Yeah. And it was so important to me to be able to comport myself in a manner that not made, not only made my family proud, but made all of you proud. Because I was setting a, a, an example. I was opening up the road for the rest of you. And if I did things that blocked that road, if I did things that caused problems, then you wouldn't get a chance to go down that road. So the first thing that they did was to, like I said, you know, file this court case against me. And I just have to say, it was the strength and love of the people in this room that stood with me time and time again, went to court until all of this was proven to be unfounded and just, you know, political machinations. So, <laughs> so I was able to persevere with the help and support of all of you. I thank you all for allowing me to be your standard bearer and carry the flag of the 49th City Council District into battle for schools, libraries, parks, housing, transportation, health care, better and safer streets, and to improve the quality of life for all of my constituents. And the thing that makes me proudest is when I look at the map of the 49th District, I can see some improvement, something that we've done in every neighborhood in the 49th District. And only they would benefit by my being in office. But when we look at the record and the hard work that my staff put in, you don't you don't even see the constituent calls and, and the outcomes that we had with, with those that my staff worked really hard. But there is not a community that can say that we did not make it better during our 12-year tenure. As I prepare to leave office, there's a lot of talk about legacy, uh, about the legacy I will or will not leave. There's positive and negative. So people will talk good and bad about the four new schools I got or the, all the park renovations, or the money for Richmond University Medical Center, over $47 million, affordable housing, street pavings, street signs, economic development projects. But the legacy that I want to leave you with is the legacy of the love that I have for the North Shore and the people who live here. Woo! That's the legacy I want to be a I want to leave a legacy of persistence and tenacity. I thought it was really funny that um, everybody who spoke took that my way.
were persistent. Um, but I want to leave a legacy of persistence and tenacity. I want you, all of you who say you stand on my shoulders, I want you to continue that legacy. I want you to be persistent. I want you to be tena tenacious. I don't want you to be fearful. I want you to take the courage. It, it's not easy being on the side of right. And so I want you to, I want to leave that legacy. And I leave you with the fact that there is still a place for honesty and integrity. to work collaboratively and build for the collective good. I need to say that again. I need for you to continue the effort, my effort, to build collaboratively and to build for the collective good. We can't continue to work in silos. We can't be about me and I. about pronouns, and everybody's talking about my pronoun is he, she, them, they, whatever. It is we and us in the North Shore. And we have to do that. We have to. My goal going in was to build capacity. Because I was told that there were no um, black and brown organizations that had the capacity to deliver the services that we need so much in our community. I was told that they were never considered for big grants, for cornerstone projects, for, for projects that our children needed. And so my goal was to build the capacity for all of the organizations on Staten Island. And I know that people said, that, you know, oh, $5,000, that ain't much. But $5,000 every year for 12 years gave them the capacity to go and get other grants, bigger grants. And then there were, there were initiatives that the city council had that we were able to get that were $50,000 grants and 100,000 grants. And I'm glad to see so many of you in here who were the recipient of those things. I want you to know that there is power in unity. I want to say it again. There is power in unity. And I would be remiss if I failed to point out that I got to be your councilwoman because people came out and voted in record numbers. So please know that the real power lies in the vote. We can't continue to sit back and expect somebody to do something for us if you can't get up and go out And I dedicate that last comment to my mommies, my mommy Dixon and my mommy Margie.
that these two warrior queens have done. Sharp legal mind. 
to make sure that we didn't do anything that would get us in any kind of trouble. <laughs> um, and, uh, and she kept everybody in line, in line. And um, I, thank, I thank you so much, you know, for, for your time. And to Selena Gray, who was on the planning committee. <laughs> Thank you, Selena, so much. I want to thank the team of volunteers who were the reception committee and the greeters. Why don't they go on the full outside? So and I want to thank, um, this isn't the proper term, but um, the musicians. I want to thank Brandon Stratford. Say, 
Oops, der Namensmann hier. Oh, oh, Daddy. Ray. Ray, I don't know if it was spear or they just didn't want to hear my mouth again. But, but um, they championed, you know, they championed my cause. And I can't thank you enough, Lori. You were the most dynamic uh, majority leader that the city council has had in the 12 years that I've been. Enough. There's not enough adjectives or superlatives to, de to define your tenure as our majority leader. Yes. Yes. And Helen, Helen, it's just just like the Colombo of our group because well, she kind of like backs into it, and she starts out like she doesn't know what she's talking about. trip over. And to all my esteemed colleagues, Charles, you know, you are the baby of the bunch, <laughs> but you've been there um, a term now. So we are going to help you be um, all that you can be. You are. You are. not giving him credit for some of the things that he's done. And um, I, I just have to say, he truly is standing for diversity in the Democratic Party. And, and we can see that by the fact that we have our first um, vice chair of the executive board of the Democratic County Committee. We have our first female District Leader Jasmine Robinson. We have our first male district leader and Robert Perkins. And so things take time, but we're we're getting there. And I'm not telling you that to say be patient, because that's the last thing I want you to do. Yeah. Do not be patient. Do not be patient. Kick the doors in. And um, I really want to. No more patience. No more patience. I want. Um, I just want to say uh, to my colleagues in government, you work to ensure that the people of New York City were well served, and I thank you. And to my clergy, I call them my clergy. Every time I send them um, an email or a text or something. I call them my esteemed clergy because I truly mean that. I love them so much. And they've been there for me. And um, I just I just want to thank you for being at my side for 12 years, offering me prayers and guidance. I couldn't have done it without you. I started out giving honor to God. And then I have to thank you for helping me stay true to that path. I want to thank my beloved community groups. Where are you? Make some noise. Hey! I really wanted all of you to speak, but you know, I thought Max was going to kill me. So um, I, I really want you to know how much I love you. And, uh, I, and I recognize how hard the work is that you do and how under-resourced you are. But I want you to know to keep up the good fight. And someone talked about, um, biblically, the water. Um, water where the, 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 the Please, we can do that. 
but we need to do that together. And so uh, my community organizations, my community leaders, you are phenomenal, phenomenal. And I wish that I could just name all of you by name, but um, I, I, I just, I'd like you to stand up. Since I can't, I can't do that, I'll get it. I've already talked a lot. Can you just stand up, all my community leaders, all Underappreciated, mm. under-resourced, and they just keep on going, and they make our lives better. And I'm telling you, the struggles that they have had to endure, and, and I got to give it to Universal Temple of the Arts. Yeah. It's like, it's like a little, a little train that just kept chugging, not fixing it, I just want you to know that she will always be a guiding force in our lives. And that we will not allow her to be forgotten. We will not allow her to be forgotten. a true, a true spirit. You know, if Bobby is, is out there trudging and if it is happening, so much with so little. And the businesses and their organizations and our black our chamber of commerce and those who suffered through the pandemic, I want to acknowledge and I want you to know that we appreciate all your efforts on behalf of our community. And I want to acknowledge the lives of those that we lost to COVID. I want, I want to acknowledge that we've all been traumatized. It's been a long two years, but yet you persisted and you went on. I sincerely love you all, and I hope that I, I was able to give you stepping stones that you needed and deserved for sustainability. That is my wish and my hope. And to my family, I know you thought I was going to forget you. To my family and my friends. Did I do my staff yet? Yes. yes. I did. Oh. <laughs> no. Well, I'll just say, I will say to you once again, you are awesome. All of you. Some of you have gone on to bigger and better things, and I like to think that that's because we trained you for that. Um, but I, I just wish you all the best, and thank you. Thank you for the love, because we couldn't have done it, and done it well, if we weren't, um, if there wasn't a love and a spirit of, of uh, family and teamwork. We love you too. We love you too. And to my family and my friends, my, my close friends, I want to thank you for the sacrifices that you made. Tim, I know. I know. I know. Every time you call, Mom, can you? Mom, can you? Mom has some Zoom meeting. Some, something 
Um, uh, my, my, my grandchildren, this is a true story. This is a true story. My grandchildren's grandparents, other grandparents, live in Vermont. Now that's about a five hour drive, right? They live in Vermont. Those grandparents see my grandchildren that I live 15 minutes away from more than I do. And that is going to change. When people ask me where I'm going or what I'm going to do, I'm going to give a lot of love, the love that I have for you all. I'm going to give some of that love to my grandparents. to love and support me. Yes, yes. And Tim, again, when I have these little episodes with the computer, um, I can't get on my Zoom, and I'm sharing the hearing, and you have to get out of your bed to come because you work all night to get mom out. I want you to know how much I appreciate that. And you still, still found it in your hearts to love and support me. And then there's my support group. My mom is. My neighbor. Shanna. Nikki. And, you know, of course, Tanisha. Wayne and Regina. I want to thank you for all. I want to thank you. Thank you. You know, sometimes when, um, when you're out there by yourself, it's so special to have somebody just that loves you and, and, and will just accept whatever is going on with you and just, you know, just embrace you and, and, and say to you, it's going to be okay. And to my constituents, I pray that I left you better off than you were when I started. And in the words of Mary McLeod Bethune, my Shiro, I need you love. Thank you. In the words of Debbie Rose, no longer just Mary McLeod Bethune, but also our Mary McLeod Bethune. I leave you love. So to the Almighty God who grants us love, and from love created us, and out of love allowed us to create love for one another. We leave understanding that it is us and we. It is us and we. Protect us, motivate us, to love we in the name of our Creator. Amen.